I know you recently shared some some really interesting news around AI. It was around 30% of AI today writes Microsoft's code. The IT backlog or the tech debt that exists in the world broadly. You need more software built such that it can address the world's needs. How do you build trust in a workflow where one of your coworkers, for example, is a bot? Copilot tuning is not just about using intelligence, but it's about tuning intelligence to amplify a given firm's, you know, ability to produce the products and services that they anyway are doing and doing it with much more, uh, I'll call it leverage. Your point is absolutely right. We do need these social systems and a language. That's why I think the fact that it's all natural language, the work artifacts, uh, that I think becomes the interface. Satya, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. I've been following along for, for all the exciting announcements with Microsoft Build. And I mean, there is so much to cover, so much to chat about, but I wanted to really dive into a lot of the developer-focused questions that I have. It's a huge part of my audience as well. And I know you recently shared some, some really exciting, interesting news around AI that I think it was around 30% of AI today writes Microsoft's code. With the introduction of co-pilot tuning, where companies can train co-pilot on their own data, how do you see a developer's day-to-day -day evolving as both the AI and domain-specific tuning become the norm? Yeah, and Joe, the way I, Tiffany, I come at this is if you look at the demand side of software development, the reality is uh, the IT backlog or the tech debt that exists in the world broadly, right, not just in the narrowly defined tech industry, right? When you look at a small business in Indonesia to a large multinational, you know, are trying to in manufacturing in Poland, and you sort of look at the world, then you need more software built such that it can address the world's needs. So if you say the demand is there and there's a massive deficit of, of actually supply. So therefore, all of these dev tools, right, whether it was just simple code completions from a few years ago to Copilot Chat to Copilot Agent Mode or even what we launched today with Copilot Coding Agent, all are really about helping software developers and software development teams stay more in the flow, working down that tech debt, more, you know, producing the tech solutions that the world needs. And then the other piece, which is this copilot tuning to me, is again more like another tool for any software engineer in any company to be able to then turn the particular firm's competitive advantage, right? Which is what is it? The knowledge they have as a firm, uh, the documents they have, or the databases they have, but then to use the latest model plus that data to turn it into sort of the competitive advantage for that firm. That's what this co-pilot tuning is. It's not just about using intelligence, but it's about tuning intelligence to amplify a given firm's you know, ability to produce the products and services that they anyway are doing and doing it with much more, uh, I'll call it leverage. I like that so much. You mentioned it's not just about using intelligence, but about tuning it to to amplify the best way possible that these companies, these businesses can utilize it. That's correct, absolutely, well said. You've talked about a future where we all have AI squads, which I, I get excited about. I love that that thought and an idea about one for emails, one for data, one for ideas, for example. Now that Teams is launching these multi-agent systems that you can actually that can actually work together, how do you build trust in a workflow where one of your coworkers, for example, is a bot? Yeah, I mean, that's a, the real question in front of us is what's the social system of trust that exists? And I think the social system of trust would be very similar in some sense to how we, even we as co-workers, when you're working on a project, we're able to look at the work artifacts. We're able to inspect what we are doing uh, in our work to move things forward. So even like one of the, like the coding agent, for example, I love, and even I assign a PR or an issue to it, it, it opens a PR in its own branch. The thing that I go to is the issues log, right? So, I mean, it's actually committing all of the session log where it's committing all these draft commits. And I'm looking at it and say, wow, every step of the way, it's like uncannily watching someone else, uh, you know, code away and know what they're doing, right? So in some sense, your point is absolutely right. We do need these social systems 
Uh, and a language, that's why I think the fact that it's all natural language, the work artifacts, that I think becomes the interface. In fact, even the markdown file for agents is the interface between us and an agent. And so I do feel, whether it's in Teams or whether it's in GitHub or what have you, uh, we will have to basically ha build out these things which are the interchanges uh, where humans and agents can essentially, quite frankly, verify each other's uh, uh, work. I love that. I couldn't agree more. It's, 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 it's really an exciting time. It's like you have all these little co-workers now, if you will, that can kind of just help enable you to build better, faster, and you know you can focus on larger tasks at hand, if you will. That's correct. I mean, the intent. So I think one of the things, it, it, at some level, the march of computing has always been about can computers really understand us? And in some sense, one is, oh, well, it can understand speech or text or natural language. But really, can it understand our intents, right? That's what the agentic web is about, which is it's about being able to express a high-level intent. When I say to you some high-level intent, you are able to unpack from it what I really meant. That's what we are talking about. It's delegation of high-level intents. But then the output of the task completion is still a body of work that I can inspect. And so therefore, I think that some combination of that uh, will, I think, be, give us all a lot more leverage. You know, and, and kind of on that note, I know this is top of mind for Microsoft and, and you're always you're always staying on top of this and ahead of this. Building AI that we can trust. It's a huge challenge that everyone faces. I mean, the stakes are so high. With all the new security layer, layers you're launching, you know, I know you recently launched Prompt Shields and Microsoft PureView. How do you make sure an AI doesn't go off the rails, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's sort of one of those number one considerations. And the good news here is we're not just talking about sort of, you know, whether it's trust or security or management as something that we'll do later, but we're building it into the core of the system and the engineering practice. I mean, take something like AI safety, right? I mean, every eval essentially is an AI safety eval, right? Which is you don't get to get go past go with even your first call it model train or post train and deploy without having that safety layer be part of the tool chain of how these things make progress. So that's one, which is build into Foundry, build into the tool chain safety and that safety first engineering process and the tools are there. The second aspect also is like, just like as we are gonna have agents, you wanna have identities for those agents, right? So, you know, who did what? We have that, right? Inside an enterprise, when you have an Enter ID, you can inspect, you have an audit log. And so that's where, that's why we now have Enter ID for agents. We have the same management control plane uh, for agents. In fact, Defender can even help protect the agent sandbox, right, from, say, some wallet hijack or what have you, and credential theft. So I think that using the rails that we use today to protect our compute systems extend to even agent and their compute systems and then build AI safety into the engineering process, I think this, this combination of things will really help us keep the trust and earn the trust every day. I couldn't agree more. There's not, there's no one aspect to it. There's so many different moving parts and it starts with building safety and trust in from, from day one, as you kind of mentioned and it's threaded throughout. So I think that's really great. I know there's a lot of excitement around Copilot, of course, and you know, custom agents and teams, even the new agent store. How will we actually know if Microsoft's AI is transforming work, not just adding another tool? Could you give me a specific milestone that will prove, for example, or we can measure that it's working? If you yeah, I know it's a great point. I mean, beyond sort of milestones, you know, those are business metrics for us in terms of our growth. I think it's really the, when you start seeing the impact, right? When they, one of the best examples we shared at this developer conference was what Stanford University is doing with Copilot and Teams and this multi agent orchestrator in Foundry, right? So essentially take something so high stakes as a tumor board meeting and cancer care. And what the uh, you know the uh, IT folks in Stanford Medicine were able to do was orchestrate multiple agents, right? Pathology, clinical trials, data and information from PubMed, bring it all together so that they can have a more successful tumor board meeting. And then the output of the tumor board meeting is going, whether it's to the teaching hospital or everywhere else to the clinical care, you know, such that everyone there who's working super hard to improve care and reduce costs can do their job more effectively. That's a great example. And by the way, they, you know, it's all inside of Teams. They're using uh, the M365 Copilot. 
and using Foundry, but ultimately it's their workflow, it's their orchestration and, uh, and a high stakes uh, business process like uh, tumor board meetings. And so that to me is when I'll know. And by the way, the other cool thing about them is they're sharing all that learning with all the rest of the community, right? So that's when you see when it's not just about we have customers, but we have customers who are also producing IP that's being broadly shared. Uh, that's when you know you're onto something. It really is. And I think that's such a fantastic example because it's really impactful examples where you can see how it can impact, you know, human health and benefit us. And it's a very exciting time. Satya, you've led Microsoft through AI's biggest biggest growth spurt from co-pilot to multi-agent systems and teams. I mean, eventually, when you look back, what would make you feel like you truly left your mark on the company? I think for us, you know, having, you know, spent most all of my professional life at Microsoft and, you know, gone through multiple of these tech shifts, I think that the privilege I've had is that each one of these tech shifts has helped us realize more of our mission, uh, if you think about it, right? Which is when we say our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more, to be able to then have the next big thing we're excited about truly ultimately be measured by one thing and one thing alone, which is its impact in the real world is tangible and bigger than the last time around. And so if anything, the mark that I think or any one of us wants to leave is that that capability in the institution remains fresh, not afraid of going to the next frontier. And then we keep seeking ultimately how we realize that mission with new technologies. Because the reality is the tech today that's sort of new and hot is going to be, you know, old. The question though is the mission will always remain. And so our ability as an institution and an organization and as a culture to keep that fresh is going to be the most important thing. You know, Satya, I've, I've asked that question to almost everyone that I sit down for conversations with. And I've never heard a, a leader answer in the way you just did where it was us or our. Um, and I think that's really, really exciting and refreshing to hear. So I, you know, not only appreciate your answer, but the way you answered it is really looking ahead and as a team, as, as what, you know, the, the full Microsoft team can do together. No, absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity to chat and it's been a real pleasure and I'm glad you were able to virtually join and the very best with the baby and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time here. Maybe you can bring the baby along to our build. Thank you, Satya. Have a wonderful rest of build. Thank you so much.